Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be doing some more French Country Thrift Flips for spring. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Let's get started. I had this lovely old washboard in my stash for a while and thought that I'd see if it would sell as is, but it didn't, so now I'm giving it a makeover. After cleaning, I'm applying two coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. I love this paint. It has a built-in stain blocker and a built-in top coat, so it saves a lot of extra steps. So I'm going to give it a coat, but as you can see, I'm not being careful to get good coverage. I actually want some of that old wood to show through. We're going for a very vintage sort of rustic look here. I was a little bit worried about bleed through, but I just made sure to give the first coat a couple of hours to dry so that it could do its job before I came in with my second coat here. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Floral Anthology and Brocante Transfers. I had previously cut out a design that I thought would be perfect on this washboard. I knew that I wanted to add some florals too, so I'm just going through the floral anthology transfer pad there to work out what design I want. You can see I'm having a play with a few different ones, but I decided to go with some florals that had some paler tones. I just thought that that would work better for this project. I'm also going to trim off some of the text from the brocante design and add it to the bottom. Next, I'm going to start burnishing my brocante design down. So you can see I've centered it there and now I'm starting to rub. Now, there was a bit of overlap and some of the design will not fit on the edges there, but that's okay. So I'm just working my way along, rubbing and lifting the plastic to make sure that I have all of the design that I want down. And then I'm going to burnish it further with the plastic. The next part is a little bit trickier. I want to put this design over the top of the washboard and there are lots of different levels. So I've laid my transfer down and then I am starting to rub the design into the different creases there. I did bring my backing back so that I didn't accidentally have the transfer adhere in an area that I wasn't ready to burnish and you can see I am going to get some cracking and I'm okay with that because I want a vintage look here but I'm just working my way from the bottom to the top and bending and manipulating that transfer over the curves here and again not going to be perfect but I'm okay with that. This is definitely something that you have to do in stages. So you can see I'm doing the lower curve, then the top curve, and then I'm repeating the step. So it was very fiddly, but I think it was worth it. Then I'm grabbing that little bit of text and adding it down the bottom. So I decided to make this project functional. I wanna actually have an attachment where people could hang towels from if they wanted. I imagine this in a laundry room or even in a bathroom. So I've grabbed this dowel here. This is actually a bit of trim and it has a bit of a curve to it. So you can see I'm just positioning it in between the parts of the washboard there and I'm marking where I'll need to cut. I did cut it with a handsaw and now I'm adding two coats of Endless Shore. While that's drying, I'm going to come in with some fine grit sandpaper and distress my design further. I want this to look very vintage and aged. I'm wiping off the dust and then I'm coming in with two coats of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat to protect my transfer. When that's dry, I'm going to attach my little dowel here that's going to act as our towel rail. There was a little indent on either side and I managed to pull the washboard apart just a little. I was careful not to pull it completely apart. This is old. And I'm just positioning it where I want it to go. And then I am going to be using my nail gun and I'm going to add a nail into each end of this dowel. I noticed that when I came to do my second nail that the original nail had come a bit loose on the washboard so I am going to take a hammer next and I'm going to hammer all that back in and make sure that it's all sturdy again. Finally, I'm going to add a hanging attachment to the back. 
And here's our finished washboard towel holder. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that it's amazing how you can add some paint and some transfers and take something that was looking a bit tired and turn it into something that would look beautiful in anybody's home. And now it's functional as well. Our next project is this sweet little ducks. I got these from the thrift store for a few dollars and I thought that they were adorable but the paint job was looking a bit tired so we're going to give them a makeover. After giving them a wipe down I'm going to remove all the little raffia from around their necks and I'm going to save that for possible future use. I'm then applying two coats of Dixie Belle's Slick Stick Bonding Primer. This is going to make sure that whatever paint I put on these will stick and stay there. I want to do a few things on here so I need to make sure that my paint has a good base. I'm going to give about an hour in between coats and then I'm going to let these sit for 24 hours to make sure that the Slick Stick has done its job. Now I hope you guys don't hate me for painting these. I know that they did look cute already but it just isn't my style. The next day I am coming in with Dixie Belle's Burlap Chalk Mineral Paint and I'm mixing it with the Sea Spray Texture Additive. I'm going to stipple this on each of the ducks. This is going to be the base. I am going to come over it with a lighter color. This is a really, really beautiful tone and it's a bit more of a subtler look if you're going for a bit of a two-tone look. I really love using Dixie Belle Sea Spray. This is wonderful if you want texture. It also can give the appearance of concrete or stone. It really just takes your projects to a whole new level. Let me know in the comments if you've tried it. Once my sea spray is dry, I'm going to come in with Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a beautiful antique white and I'm dabbing and stippling it on, but as you can see, I do not want full coverage. I want to be able to see some of that burlap sea spray mixture underneath. I really want this to look a bit more vintage and aged, so I'm not going for perfect here. So if these tones were not to your liking, you could definitely come in and use some different color combinations here. You could go with black underneath as a more contrasting color and then come over the top with a light color, or you could do color as your base and then come in with your white. It really is up to you. Once that coat is dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's flat clear coat to seal. Okay, I couldn't stop there guys. I had to grab my floral anthology transfer out again and I'm picking some smaller florals that I'm actually going to add to our sweet little ducks. I've come up with a few of the flowers that I think will be suitable and I'm going to start with the yellow design. Now this is a bit of an awkward shape so I did have to bend and manipulate these quite a bit but these transfers handle it pretty well I'm pleased to say. So I just sort of held it in one spot, made sure that I transferred that part and I just made my way around rubbing and burnishing and then once I've got it all down I'm using my fingers to work it into the different crevices and burnishing it a bit more with the plastic. So I'm going to be repeating each of these steps with each of the florals on the ducks. So east is not far away so I definitely have that on my mind so I think that's why I reached for the florals. Now I'm actually going to end up changing this little duck. I do end up painting over some of it because I felt like the purple just didn't sort of go with the theme that I was going with. It didn't go with the other colors on the other ducks. On this one I did trim out just one flower and I am adhering that down, burnishing it and then I'm going to come in with some sandpaper and I'm going to distress the florals. I want them to look aged and vintage as well. Mm -hmm. 
So next you're going to see me come in with a bit more drop cloth to hide some of the florals. Again, I just felt like it was a little bit overwhelming on this dark. I think I made the right choice. Let me know in the comments if you think so. Next, I'm going to seal each of the transfers on the ducts with some more flat clear coat. I'm then going to grab some Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and I have watered it down a little and I'm applying it to the duck and then wiping away a lot of it with a wet wipe. I'm going to work my way around and pay particular attention to the crevices on the duck. I want to give it a bit more of an aged finish. I don't want it to be too overwhelmed though, so I am wiping off a lot of it. You could achieve a similar look with a antiquing glaze, a watered down brown paint, or perhaps even a dark wax. If you're going to give this a try, I definitely recommend sealing your piece like I did before applying any glaze or waxes, or if you're going to use a wax, you probably want to add a clear wax first. Doing this will ensure that you have more control over how dark and antiqued your piece becomes. So as I was working on this little dark, I really felt like I needed to cover up that purple flower and I just left it in here so that you could see that as I'm creating or as anybody creates really, your plans for something can change and evolve the longer you work on it. So don't be afraid to have a think and revise where your project is going. There's nothing wrong with that. So here you can see I'm coming in with some drop cloth on an artist brush. I just want to hide that purple flower and leave the yellow flower. I just feel like it works better with the other florals that I selected. And here are our finished floral ducks. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think that they look very, very cute and perfect for spring and Easter. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. Did I go too far with the florals? Let me know. I thought I'd just show you here that you could actually turn the ducks around if the florals didn't suit the seasonal decor that you had out. So I really feel like these ducks have a lot of possibilities. Our final project is this little jug here. This is going to be a pretty quick and easy flip. After cleaning, I'm applying two coats of Dixie Belle's Slick Stick Bonding Primer. This is a very slick surface, so I want to make sure that my paint is going to adhere. After this has had 24 hours to dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a beautiful bright white. I didn't paint the inside in case somebody wanted to add water and have some flowers in this. I'm then going to seal the outside of the jug with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's crockery stamp and some of their black permanent ink. I settled on this lovely pure thick cream design. I thought it would be perfect. So I'm removing it from the backing so that I've got a bit more flexibility. And then I am adding my ink to the stamp. I got some ink where I didn't want it. So I'm using a wet wipe to remove it. Next, I am going to position my stamp and press down. Once you press down, you're committed, do not move it. I'm then going to add some of the ink to the top edge of the jug. When the ink is dry, I'm sealing it with gloss clear coat. And here's our finished cream jug. This was a quick and easy flip and I hope that it's inspired you to use some of those crockery stamps to make over some of the tired jugs that you've got at home. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video and that these projects have inspired you for your own spring DIYs. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. For more DIYs, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. 
You can find all of the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.